Hey everybody, this is Alessandro. Welcome back to my channel. And today I want to talk to you about gimbal lock. Okay, um, I'm pretty sure that during your own animation, sometimes it will happen to you that you have some involuntary rotation. Okay, so maybe you are moving the character around, uh, rotating some controller, and then at some point it's happening something very weird. Okay, let me show you what I mean. So I'm selecting the controller for the arm here. As you can see, I have some key. Okay. Uh, very simple key, very simple rotation. Okay, so as you can see, I'm going from uh, rotating this axis, and I'm going down here, up, go back to the center, and then I'm going back. So if you can see between these two key, okay, is a uh, is a very simple rotation. Okay, so I'm expecting the rotation to be linear, uh, and uh, but if I look at the uh, at the timeline here. As you can see, instead of going straight down to this point, it does this weird arc, okay? And I'm pretty sure at this point something like this happened to you. And this is called gimbal lock, okay? Many of you maybe already know uh, what it is, and uh, maybe other they don't know it. So I want to explain to you a little bit more in depth and how to fix it. So first of all, for most of the cases, what we can do, we can simply go into the graph editor. Okay, select basically all the all the key, then go to key here, curves and Euler filter. Okay, and this one most of the time we will automatically uh, fix the problem. Okay, so if now we are we are scrubbing the timeline, you can see the rotation is clear compared before. Okay, there is a little bit still more here, um, but more or less is done. Okay, so the Euler filter doesn't work all the time only I would say 80% of the time but in some case it will, it will save your life okay guys but let's go to another scenario here for example where I have like the, the arm straight like this okay and uh, I want to just put my arms down actually in forward okay again simple rotation sorry at this point we can just kill this one for now we don't, don't think we need it anymore so let's go back to this one. Just going straight here, okay, and then from here we're going down, okay. And forget about for now the penetration, guys. Um, I just want to explain you the technicality about it. So you will expect the the animation to be linear, right? But if I go here and scrub, as you can see, the the arms is going to this side, okay, and going back down, okay. So now let's try to fix this one more time with the Euler filter and we go to the graph filter again one more time select all the keys okay curves Euler filter and nothing happened okay and this is because um, Euler filter doesn't work all the time as I was mentioning but before I show you how to fix this problem uh, I want to explain to you guys uh, what's the reason behind this because uh, you see, everything looks very clean in terms of access because I'm in uh, at the moment I'm in object mode, okay. But the problem is that things are not as clean as they seem. So if I go, if I hold, if I hold the E button and press uh, left key, uh, left click mouse button, and I go to gimbal, guys, as you can see, the ax axes are slightly different, okay. And as you can see, something happening here that the x-axis is moving okay and now the the basically the x-axis and the blue axis the z-axis are on the same spot so basically now when i'm trying to rotate down okay if i go back down here and I use the object mode to re rotate down basically as i did before um what basically it's happening that the computer is trying to find a different way to achieve that pose okay and that's why you have this weird rotation and maybe you never knew about this but basically I want to explain you very quickly how access work in uh, in 3d software okay so you see guys um, any object okay who has rotation will have a orientation or their access and you can access by um, going here in attribute editor okay and you will see the rotate or their access X Y Z okay and if you click here you will have many different ones that they will give you many different results. But before we explore this, um, I want to show you exactly how does it work. 
So for example, when you have the rotation axis x, y, z, it simply means that um, the x-axis here is parented to the to the y, okay, and the y-axis is parenting to the z one, okay. I hope it's not the other way around, guys. So that's basically mean that um, when you rotate z, all three axes are gonna follow, okay. If I rotate y, uh, so let me go back here in object. So if I rotate on y, only the x is following and if I rotate X in only in his axis nothing else is moving okay and of course the problem is happening because of this axis okay when you rotate this axis about 90 degree okay as you can see now we don't have the other axis here to rotate in the in the, in the forward position and that's why the the 3d software try to compensate rotating all three axes at the same time guys and if you want to have another proof about this, okay, basically what you can do is like, um, you know, moving the, let's move the arms, you know, we are position, okay, right, guys? Maybe this, okay? And at this point, you're expecting that if I rotate on Z, this will happen. If I rotate on Y, this happens. And if I rotate on X, this is going to happen, right? So... If you go again on the graph editor, okay, let's make it smaller. Okay, as, you, as I said before, you're expecting that moving the x axis, the arm should move like this, right? But if I, as you can see, if, if I move it, it doesn't look like it, it's completely different. And actually, if I move the x axis, as you can see, all three axes here. All three keys are being moved together at the same time. And this is because the object representation is not the real representation of 3D axis. You always have to go in gimbal if you want to keep under control what's going on. And as you can see here, the axes are all messed up. But in fact, now, if you're going to move the Y axis, the only axis is going to move is the, is the green one. Okay? You see? I'm moving only the, the green one here. Because that's what's really happening in the, in the 3D software. So the question at this point is, how do you fix all, how do you fix all this mess? Well, to make it very simple, is uh, you need first of all to find out the the right orientation order that you need for uh, your own animation. Okay, so always stay in gimbal mode. Okay, guys, and as you can see now that if I if I choose Y Z X. It's, it's not a good one because as soon as I put the arms down, you know, it's I, I'm in gimbal mode right now, okay? And actually, if I'm moving back and forth, I might accidentally move two axes at the same time. Okay? So this one for me is a really good setup, okay? Because as you can see, when I move the arms down, it brings along all the axes, and then I can do this, okay? Without messing up all the axes around. Um, for example, for the... Uh, for the pelvis here, if you you know, if you know that uh, you know your character is gonna rotate, you know, move all around in the scene and move into this direction, you wanna make sure that you know all the three axes are following when you rotate on the y axis, okay? But if you have like another setup, okay, like this one for example, which is the wrong one, as soon as you move the character like this, okay, now you have the problem because you cannot move it anymore the character on the side a little bit so my biggest suggestion is as soon as you start your sequence always double check the uh, you know the orientation order of uh, of your character for each single controller okay and set it up the way you want based on the on the animation that you want to do okay guys but even in this case even if you do perfectly you're not going to be able always to solve the problem every time you know there is always going to be once in a while um uh you know a moment in your own animation where you're going to go into gimbal log and you cannot avoid it and your filter is not going to fix it so another great solution is for example having a secondary controller okay uh, let me show you what i mean guys okay i just create a circle here okay let's make it bigger 
Okay, that's about 50. Okay. So align it exactly to, uh, to the controller that you need. Okay, and I'm gonna parent this one to this one. So now this simply means that when you normally animate, okay, you're gonna use the master controller. Okay, you're gonna use this one. And again, let's make sure we are again in gimbal. Okay. And okay, now assume we have the same problem. Okay, we are rotating about 90 degree. Okay, and we want you know our cutter is gonna move towards this direction. Uh, and so on and then at some point in our animation for some reason we need to tilt it on the side But as you can see guys, we don't have the axis anymore. So in this case you can use this other controller Okay, guys, and of course at some point you have always to remember to uh, Bring it back to the neutral pose. Okay, so I would say those are the best two ways to um, you know to control gimbal lock and uh, if you, and I know it's very weird if you never heard about this for the first time. Uh, the first time I heard about this, I was really shocked. But you know, once you once you know how to control this, it will uh, help you, you know, to solve a lot of problem. You will encounter gimbal lock uh, much less in your own animation, and even when you encounter, you will know how to do it and how to fix it uh, very quickly. Okay, guys. And another note I want to give you at the very end. Okay, it's not just about um, Rotation. There's something else you should know about uh, uh, trans translation as well. Okay. Okay. Let me create uh, two objects. Okay. Okay. The small cube parented to the big one. Okay. So a lot of another mistake they see from people is that oh you know like I want to move my my you know my object like this in the in the 3D space I have Y axis here, Z axis, and X axis. Okay, so if I do this, okay, if I rotate my cube like this, okay, and I put another key, and now the Y axis is going this direction. So if I move it, okay, the Y axis is this, okay, and again, people open the graph editor, you know, when you want to clean your, your, um, your tangent and everything, your arc and stuff like that. You, what you're doing is like, okay, you know what, I want to adjust the height of this one and I'm expecting it, you know, the, the y-axis moving in this way. So if I'm going to move this key up and down, it's going to go along this axis, right? Well, this is actually very wrong because, again, that's not how it works, okay? It's the, the y-axis is not based on the rotation of the object, but is based on the axis of the object that is parent with, okay? So... If this little object is parent to this one, the Y axis is going to go this direction, okay? If I rotate this object in this direction, okay, now the Y axis is going to go like this, okay? As you can see, so it's it's very simple once, once you understand, but I remember when I guys started 3D because I started by myself, I had no idea about this and, you know, I, I look at the axis of the object and I assume when I see this axis go in this direction, if I move the key here in the graph editor, I was expecting to go that direction and then when it didn't happen, it was very confusing, especially when I want to clean arc and stuff like that and it was very difficult to keep it under control. But once you understand that all this works, it's, uh, it's very easy to control it. Okay guys? So again, another small tutorial, you know, before the holiday guys. I hope you're going to have a great new year and see you next time. Ciao.